choosing the beat. Oh, if you give a little more than you take, if you try to fit more than you break, if you're the kind who takes the time. To help a stranger in the rain, there's a place for people like you. If you stand up, put those down on their knees, and lend a voice to those who cannot speak. If you shine a little light. Give sight to the ones who lost the way. There's a place for people like you. Our father, there's a street made of gold, and when you get there, there's a hand. Try to be the change you want to see. If you lay down your life for love, so someone could be saved. There's a place for people. Choosing the beat. Oh, if you give a little more than you take, if you try to fit more than you break, if you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain. There's a place for people like you. If you stand up, put those down on their knees, and lend a voice to those who cannot speak. If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who lost the way. A place for people like you. Our father, there's a street made of gold, and when you get there, there's a hand to hold. I believe when your days. Oh.
you want to see If you lay down your life for love so someone could be saved There's a place for people like you Our father pays the streets
Good afternoon, family. Wherever you are, can you please take your seat so we could get started this afternoon? I know you want to stay by the casket, but we'll have to close it and start the service. So can you please find a seat? And those of you who are outside and you are here to give support to the family, can you please come in? Let's do that. Okay. Let us all stand, please, for the prayer. Let's pray. Our Father, we are so happy to have you as our God. At every phase and stage of our lives, we still can say how great thou art. We love you and thank you for caring for us. Tonight, Lord, this family is here. And they are about, well, we are helping them say their final goodbye to a loved one. It's never easy. So we pray that you'll be with them. And bless everybody who's going to take part in the service today. That it brings hope to these people in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to begin the service for our beloved sister. 
but we are asking all those on the outside to please come inside because we are about to commence our song service. And our first song this afternoon will be Does Jesus Cares? If you are carrying the SDA hymnal, it's number 181. Does Jesus Cares? <clears throat> Does Jesus Cares? When my heart is pain to deeply for more and sound as the burdens rise and the cares distress and the way grows weary and long. Oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief when the day.
106, face to face with Christ my Savior. Face to face, what will it be? When the refracture I behold him, Jesus Christ who died for me. Number 530. It is a well known song, and I want everybody to join us in singing. Is it well with my soul?
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The song says, It is well with my soul when peace like a river attends, attendeth my way. This afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you here this afternoon. I would have loved to welcome you under different circumstances this afternoon but life throws at us sometimes some curveballs that we do not anticipate and this is life under the sun but this afternoon I would like to welcome those of you who are here with the bereaved family who have come to support them we would like to um, welcome the bereaved I would like to encourage them to be strong at this moment trust God and um, be courageous because the, the, the mom who have passed away, as far as we know, died in hope and died in the Lord. Amen? Amen. So we will not weep. We may, we can, it is okay to weep. But we will not weep as if those who are without hope. Because blessed is the dead who died in the Lord. And the psalmist says, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his saints. So we want to encourage you this afternoon to be strong and be hopeful in the presence so we'd like to wish um welcome those well wishes and friends and family who have come to support the bereaved be extend love and let your love be seen and let your sympathy be felt so we welcome you this afternoon in this setting may god's name be praised and this and this service not for the dead but for the living be an experience that you can look forward to and you can examine your life in this capacity so this afternoon, uh, I'd like to also welcome, invite Sister Francis at this moment to do for us the scripture reading at this moment. Marlene Francis, we'd like to invite her at this moment to do the scripture reading. Thank you so much, Marlene Francis. As she comes. Here she comes. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Our scripture reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. Listen as I read in your hearing. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that he sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of our Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall sound from heaven with a shout and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I thank you. Let us all bow our heads as we approach our Heavenly Father. Gracious God, every one of us present this afternoon, give you thanks for the life that you have granted unto us. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your love. We thank you for Jesus who has died for us. Even now, we have come to give our support to the deceased family. We pray, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit will speak to each one who's hurting right now. May you comfort them and help them understand that beyond this moment, this very dark cloud, there is hope. For our Lord Jesus Christ, who came to this world, died, rose, went up to heaven, and will soon come back to put an end to death. So we pray, O oh God, that you will increase our faith. Help us to believe and accept your declarations as is written in the word of God. So this afternoon, Lord, we ask that you will speak a word of comfort to each one of us so that we as well can prepare for this eventuality. We know you have said it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. Help us all prepare our souls so that when you come the second time, when you would have eliminated this enemy, which has brought so much pain, so much sorrow among mankind, please God, grant us the privilege of living with thee for all eternity. Speak a word to us today. And when time shall be no more, save us all we pray in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Leo Clark is supposed to render a special message and song. Is he around? Leo Clark? Okay, if he's not in yet, we will have the eulogy done by Sister Marlin Francis once again. Good afternoon again, brothers and sisters. I am here to read on behalf of the family. Maria Louise, better known as Amma, was born on April 26, 1935, in Labrie. She was one of ten children of Jane Edgar, better known as Jan, and Flavian Edgar. She was raised in the beautiful community of Labry and gave birth to her two kids. Sabina Joseph at 19 years old and Veronica James 
at 22 years old. She worked as a housekeeper in Kaldisak, where she then met the love of her life, Gonzag, Gonzag Lewis, also known as Appa, and later moved to Bexo. At age 32, on November 25, 1957, the two lovebirds got married. She worked as a housekeeper and also a laborer with her husband for a short period of time. They had eight kids in total. She gave birth to a bouncing baby girl named Maria Judith Louis at 26. Three years later, age 29, she had her fourth child, Philip James Louis, who tragically passed away May 2007. One year after marriage, at age 33, she had her fifth child, Cletus Louis. At 36, she had Virginia Louis. Then, at 39, she had Cecilia Louis Emmanuel. Her last son, at age 41, was Richard Louis. By age 41, Mariah Louis had all ten of her precious children. She dedicated her life to her children and grandchildren. To know Amma was to know her much of a loving, kind, and caring individual she was. She was a very quiet, reserved, and non-confrontational lady. She didn't argue with others. And whenever her children or family members encountered a disagreement, she would say, Finye pisa ishmue. Ama was a mother to everyone. She was the pillar of her family and the entire community of Crownlands. In the words of Tara, it reads, Growing up with Ama was truly a blessing to me. She was able to provide everyone with the unconditional affection they desired. Ama was more than the typical grandmother. While some of her children were abroad, she took pride in raising some of her grandchildren. Jenna, Casey, Mikey, Swell, Coco Boy, and Tara. She was determined to raise us as grounded and respectful children. We went to church with her every Sunday where she made sure we at least did first communion. Amma was hardly ever biased. In fact, she was selfless, no matter who was on the receiving end. I remember my grandmother would call from the balcony of the house. And if you were down that road, you could hear her screaming, Tara! Or any of the other grandchildren, and no matter where I was, I would hear her. Tara! Tara! Back then, I would find this embarrassing. She would sometimes whoop me for being stubborn. Amma would say, Tara, pa ale, or pa fesa. And it was always a green light to do it anyways. She would have a pallet and a piece of belt always on standby, especially for Tara. There were times before she would even strike to hit me, I would already start crying, and she would sometimes stop. I went through infant, primary, and secondary school under the care of Amma while my mother was in America. When the community members and family would see me, they would say, Eh, Amma kiba ukut peng sala.
This didn't mean that the hairstyle was bad or anything of that sort. But she always made sure we looked presentable and neat. She would tell us growing up that we had to separate our going out clothes from our house clothes. She hated this organization. I was her youngest granddaughter. As she would frequently say, Tara recalls 2007 as a year she will never forget. Jenna and Casey moved to America with their parents. So instead of the original six, it became four. Suel, Coco Boy, Mikey, and Tara. Being, the tar being that, Tara always shared a room with Jenna. Her living to America changed everything for Tara. On, that, on the very first night, she woke up from having difficulty sleeping. So she got up and went to Mikey, telling him how she couldn't sleep. His response to her was, go tell Amma. That same night, Amma came in the room to sleep with Tara. And from ages 11 to 17, before Tara left St. Lucia to join her parents in America, Amma and Tara shared a room. Tara would often feel like she separated her grandparents, but that was just Amma's character. She would make any sacrifice for her children and grandchildren. From age 11, Tara and Amma's bond grew stronger. They talked about everything, especially at night when they went to sleep. Since Tara moved to America, she made it her duty to, be, to visit her beloved Amma yearly. To know Tara is to know how much she loved Amma. Amma was a genuine sweetheart, a darling to everyone. Amma would give advice to everyone, especially her children, whom she loved so much. They were her number one priority. She would always say, never share your secrets and what you want to do in life with others until you have accomplished that goal. Amma groomed us all to, to be everything that we are today. Amma lived an amazing long life. We, we are all blessed to have shared some fond memories with her. We will miss you. Till we meet again, may God welcome you with open arms at the gates of heaven. Sleep well, our Amma. Till we meet again, we love you forever. I thank you. Losing a loved one is never an easy thing. And uh, I'm sure everyone here will agree with me that if we had our way with death, we would really eliminate him. But thank God, Jesus has the answer. There are many people who are skeptical about the reality that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And they give very scant regard to his the great feat that he has accomplished on the cross for us. I want to say to you, brethren, that we need to have hope because Jesus is the conquering lion and one who has conquered death. And one of these days, he's going to put an end to death. At this moment, I would like to invite the immediate um, family members to stand and we shall have a prayer of comfort on their behalf. And as I lift them up, I'd like those of you in the congregation to utter a word of prayer on their behalf as well. You know, in moments like this, we need each other. And um, it says, I need the prayers of those I love. 
So I'd like to invite the entire congregation on the house, um, as well to join me. Stand as we um, lift them up in prayer. It doesn't matter what religion you belong to. Let's offer prayer on their behalf at this moment. Let us pray. The God who understands the affliction of mankind. You who experience the worst of mankind's treatment. You were bruised. You were nailed to a cross. You were pierced. And in the scriptures you said, because of that experience... You've been touched with the feelings of our infirmities and understand what it is when human beings go through their suffering. Consequently, you can bring relief, you can succor, you can assist. At this moment, oh God, I present the immediate family of the deceased. The in-laws, sons-in-laws, daughters-in-laws, daughters, sons, Cousins, sisters, brothers, nephews, all who have been touched and are hurt in this moment. We pray, O oh God, that you will grant them solace at this moment. When you were leaving this earth, you said you would send us the Holy Spirit, who is a comforter. At this moment, O oh God, may those who mourn receive strength and comfort from you. Help them recognize that what they are experiencing here was never your your decision was never your will. But Satan brought death. And death has been passed upon all mankind. Every one of us. We experience it some way or the other. And therefore, Lord, we ask that those folks during their hurting moment will recognize that despite having lost their loved ones, there is still hope. For you have said that if we believe in you, if we accept the teachings of the scriptures, your declarations, death will not be the end. Those who have died in Christ will be resurrected again. And those of us who are alive will be caught up to meet them in the air and live forever with you and with our loved ones. So comfort those individuals over the weeks and months, Lord, when they will be really pressed they would recognize the lost speak to them words of cheer let them know that you when you came to this life for instance when Lazarus was dead and Martha and his other sister were mourning you went to that grave and brought back Lazarus showing how concerned you were about their welfare and so this afternoon I trust oh God that you will surround those individuals with your warmth with your grace with your love and that they will understand that beyond this life there is hope and so in the meantime what they need to do is to embrace your promises your declarations and let that buoy them up keep them um, ever hoping and may they see the loss as a blessing for you say that all things will get for good to them that love god so into your hand, I commit the entire family. Hold them in your hands. Sustain them. And as they grieve, O oh God, may they grieve not as those without hope, but may they recognize that one of these days, you will reunite all those who have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior and will live with thee forever and ever where death will never have a say again in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Is Brother Leo Clark in? Okay, still has not arrived. At this point in time, we will have Sister Marlin Francis to render a special song. Thank you. There is coming a day where no heartache shall come, no more clouds 
in the sky no more tears to dim the eyes always peace for the morn on that happy golden shore what a day glorious day that will be what a day that will be when my jesus i shall see when i look upon his face the one who saves me by his grace then he'll turn to me and say enter down dear child what a day glorious day that will be there'll be no sorrows there no more burdens to bear no more sickness and no more pain no more parting over there then forever i will be with the one who died for me oh what a day glorious day that will be what a day that will be when my jesus i shall see when i look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace then he'll take me by the hands and lead me to that promised land oh what a day glorious day that will be what a day that will be when my jesus i shall see when i look upon his face the one who saves me by his grace then he'll take me by the hand and lead me through the promised land oh what a day glorious day that will be oh what a day glorious day that will be amen amen family members good afternoon it is always a dreaded moment when we bury our loved ones the hardest thing that can happen to us as a human race is to bury a loved one number two it's a divorce Number three, it's lost of a good job. But burying a loved one is so painful. And in spite of the fact that it happens so often, we can never get used to the idea of burying a loved one. And today... Today you have come... Let's look, leave him, leave him alone. Okay. Okay, okay. The person that is around him, please try and keep him quiet. 
It's not pleasant when you, when you ask a church to conduct a funeral for you and you have a character who comes in and tries to destroy everything. That's not nice. That's not nice. So, so let, let's stay together. Let's stay together. Let's be quiet. Thank you. Not too long ago, I was watching Free ABN, our television program, and there's a story about a young man. When he was just about four years, his parents were caught in a tree. His father and the people in the community, that's in Africa, was caught in a eucalyptus tree. And uh, they tie a rope to the tree and they were pulling the tree. And, and somehow a gust of wind just came and the tree fell on him. He did not die, but his lungs collapsed, his heart stopped working, and his leg was broken, his arm was broken, and, and he was just in terrible shape. Somehow, from some mystery, he survived the ordeal. They rushed him to a clinic, and he spent a couple of years recovering from his ordeal. I'm talking about hope today. Three months later, after he recovered, his father died. A year later, the outbreak of Ebola, while he was in hospital, he, after he was, well, he, did not, he was not discharged, he left hospital and came home and found out that his mother and sister, they too had died. He was alone. He needed hope. He needed somebody to help him. And somebody from the community took him in. And nurtured and, 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 nurtured and, and fed him and, and helped him. He, he went to university, graduated. When he graduated, the government came and gave everybody who graduated a job. He turned down his job. He went back to his little community. And all the children who have lost their parents from Ebola. Courage. Hope. He formed a home. While his friends were out there, his, school, his schoolmates were out there living the life and driving car and building home. For themselves. He went back into his poor community. Remained poor. But he had 30 children who nobody cared for. And he took them at his own, as his own. Planted garden. Seek help from the government. Year after year, he loved and played with them. Football, with LS ball. And he, he planted gardens and dig out the dashing. And fed them year after year after year. Until one by one. They were old enough to attend school. Hope. There are many stories like this here. It's not as bad in St. Lucia. But grandmothers and mothers. Play a role in our community that is beyond our own belief. My mom too had 12 children. And even while we grew up together, 14 of us in a house, there were still people in that house who were not our family members. These were a quality of people like Amma, who gave hope to people who had no hope, who understood the basic quality of Jesus, and moved to help you don't need money to help. You need a heart to help. Many times we look at our own situation and first thing we say, money larger. Nobody asks you for money. Everybody asks you for a caring heart, a loving heart. And so if it's fair longet you're drinking this morning, everybody will drink fair longet, but we will be happy together. When Adam disobeyed God, and if disobeyed God and ate the fruit, the human family needed help. Because we were sentenced to die. 
When God created man and woman, he created them to live forever. No death, no dying. Well, there's a brother whose name is Methuselah in the Bible. He lived for 969 years. If Amma had lived for 969, we would have to start her funeral two weeks ago because her life story would be so long. The number of people she would have helped. 969? I think she just got to 87. And so today what we have noticed about us, in spite of our money, our fame, our education, our discoveries as a human race, we still cannot prevent ourselves from dying. And the saddest thing to me, this thing grow on you. Ah, at my age, I don't want to die. At your age, you don't want to die. However, when you hit 70, you're going up to 80, you tell your children, ah, you not more. Ah, you prepare a wheel because you know what is to come. You may not want it, but it's coming. Without that name, Jesus Christ, my friends, we just cannot face death. There's no answer. There's a, cl a, a club in Chicago. It still exists. They are all millionaires. And they took a decision at one of their meetings that any time you're about to die, you will donate a million dollars to the, to the organization and they will freeze your body in liquid nitrogen minus 178 degrees centigrade. And, and when, they, when science has discovered a way for people to live forever, they will be defrosted and given life eternal. Well, while I was in the U.S., I was hoping I would get in contact with somebody from that organization and I would tell them how to live forever just for 100000 but they have the money. I would not do it free. Huh? Living free, living forever comes only through Jesus Christ. He promised one day broken families will be reunited. And it doesn't matter what death do to us today. But day is coming. When life will be given. Psalms 103 verse 15 say, For man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field he flourish. I know some people in my community growing up, they were the, the success stories. They had beautiful homes and they, they, had, they were very stylish and, and they had their life going. They had cars and vehicles. Now you should see who live in their home. Your contribution is what matters, not your money, not your big success story. That counts for nothing. What matters is your contribution. You're hoping Jesus and your contribution to the human family. How much can you give back? Everybody must give back. Everybody. Must be conscious of the fact that we must give back. If you're not giving back, you're not living. If you're not giving back, you don't understand Jesus. We've lost this quality of people. <laughs> there, there are long lists of people who are millionaires and they just couldn't get past 50. Michael Jackson died at 50. Prince, well, 56. Whitney Houston, 48. Joe Boots, 49. Elvis Presley, 42. Gary Coleman, 42. Steve Jobs, the, the cheap guy, 50. Bernie Max, 50. Anna Nicole Smith, 39. Millionaires. They were all millionaires. So, so how do you evaluate life? Your, 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 your power to survive, where does it come from? Your sustenance, where does it come from? Have you wondered how many fish must be pulled out of the ocean for you to survive? How many coconuts must be picked from the tree? How many mangoes must fall from the tree? 
How many chicken must die? How many goat must die? How many cows must die just because of you for you to survive? My friends, we've misunderstood the whole concept of living and its value. We don't understand why we are here. <coughs> that is why we may feel it's okay to just drink our lives away or smoke our lives away or just build a fence around our house and what God has blessed us is, is just to fatten our bones. That's not the reason why we came. We came to bless people. To love people, to embrace people, to forgive people, and to remind ourselves that we are children of our Heavenly Father and we must perform the duties that is set before us. And what are these duties? To love, to forgive, to embrace, to cry together, to laugh together. This quality of people, I met them. I met them when I was a little boy, but today, they have long gone. They have long gone. What do we do? Jesus promised, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there. Jesus promised, I will be with you always. Jesus promised one day all broken families will be reunited. Every day, 156,000 people die. 385,000 people are born. Our journeys are all different. We may live in the same community, same parents, but our journeys are different. I want to call upon you today. You are hearing my voice. I'm not a pessimist person. I want to call upon you to remind you that one day like Amahe, every one of us will be silent. What would you have contributed? Where is your hope? Who do you believe in? And after your voice is silent, what next? My friends, I have learned to believe in God and trust him. There is a God. Let us believe in him and let us trust him. If you are not doing what he says you should, then who are you, who are you following? Remember, that's not the end. That's the end here, but that's not the end. Jesus promised, I will come again to receive us unto himself. I long for that day. Let us give each other's hope. Let us give each other's hope in, each, in, our, in, in ourselves, what we can do. Give each other's hope in Jesus. Because the, your contribution is important to help somebody else survive. Somebody else enjoy life. May God richly bless you and empower you. Those of you whose names are down to sign the register, you could join me over here. I don't think we have a special music. Where is the chorister? We have a special music. Who? Sister? We have a special item of music. And those of you who sign in the register, please join me on your side, please. While the folks are signing the register, we'll have Sister Marlene Francis once again to render another special. If there's medals for mothers, Mama, you've weed every war. 
My dreams, mother, walked up those heavenly stairs and medals for mothers were given up there. They've mentioned a million things mom did for me, things I took for granted I never could see. If there's medals for mothers, for all of the deeds they have done, if there's medals for mothers, mama, you've win every one a medal of honor for spend on her back a medal for patience and kind loving care a medal for duty she won up above but the biggest of all was the one for her love. If there's medals for mothers, for all of the deeds they have done, if there's medals for mothers, oh mama, you've win everyone. Mama, you've win everyone. Oh mama, you've win everyone. Again, let me say thank you for coming, for supporting the family today. Um, please pick up your cell phone, your tablets, everything. Do not leave anything in the church and come back for it. We've had people come back and they did not get the phone. So please collect your water bottle and everything you carried into the sanctuary on your way out. Thank especially your cell phones. Please hold on to your phones. Let's all stand for the closing prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, we are so thankful for this woman and her contribution to her family, her friends, her people in this country. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful um, children and, and family members who have showed up in support to each other. Because bearing a loved one is not easy. We pray your blessing upon this family. Empower them, encourage them, and give them the spirit of togetherness so that they could bear each other during this difficult process. Now we are going to the cemetery, and that is the final goodbye. We pray. Please be seated. The chorus will come and conduct a song while the casket is being laid out. First, We would like to thank the pastor for his words of comfort and a message from the Lord. I pray that everyone receive a blessing from this message and that you will take it home with you. Our song is um, 626 from the church hymnal, the Seventh-day Adventist church hymnal, 626. I am thinking today of that beautiful land. Remember, 
we have the SDA hymnal and we have the church hymnal. Now the song that we are about to do is from the church hymnal. It will be on the screen so you will be able to sing. Shall we all stand? Sorry about that. Please remain seated. All bearers, all bearers, please fill the casket. And after the immediate family will fall. I am thinking today.
for choosing the beat. If you try to fix more, then you break. If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain, there's a place for people like you. If you stand up, put those down on the knees. To the ones who lost the way There's a place for people like you Our father, there's a street made of gold And when you get there, there's a hand You want to see If you lay down your life for love So someone could be saved There's a place for people like you Our father days a street Choosing the beat. Oh, if you give a little more, then you take. If you try to fix more, then you break. If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain. There's a place for people like you If you stand up, put those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who lost the way a place for people like you Our father days a street made of gold And when you get there, there's a hand to hold I believe when your days Change.
you want to see If you lay down your life for love so someone could be saved There's a place for people
you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time To help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light Give sight to the ones who lost the way There is a place for people
I'm cool, eh?
Remembering that all the issues of life are in the hands of an everlasting father, a father of love, a father of compassion, a father who says, I will come again to receive you unto myself. Let us, let us pray. My father, today we want to pray for those who are mourning. We pray for your Holy Spirit upon their lives and empower them and remind them that you are here with us and you will carry them through that too. May every one of us. Take the good qualities of Amma and apply to our lives so that we too can make a contribution to the people who are in our neighborhood. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise. Let, let's put the body down. Yeah, just put her to sing. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And just stay with her. Come on, Yeah, just put her to Let's try and put it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go to the 
Non, mais il y a un peu de mal à la vie. Mais il y a un peu de mal à la Là, j'ai bout de tout avant. Never square. Who is in charge? Who, who, who is the person in charge? No, I'm Or maybe turn it around. They have turned it all around. Oh boy. Oh boy. We play with la top line. Right, right. Oui, 
Vous aviez ici à ce jour.
All right, viewers, so the family would like to thank each and everyone who reached out to them during the time of bereavement. The family greatly appreciates your support. Do have yourself a blessed and a wonderful Sunday afternoon. One love to the maximum.